and exhale. We're gonna have the hands behind the on, the on the outsides of the thighs, drawing the knees back up. Maybe the inner thighs are a bit tender. And then we're gonna straighten out the legs along the mat and reach those arms up overhead. This one's your morning stretch. So it should feel extra good as you reach those toes and fingers away from one another. Really stretching down the length of the body. Stretch, 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 stretch. And then you can gently shift your hips from side to side, lengthening one leg at a time. You can rock across the pelvis. And then we're just gently gonna bring the knees in towards the chest, wrap the arms around the knees, give yourself a nice big hug as you turn yourself into a little ball. And then placing the feet back down on the mat. Arms lengthened alongside you. We're gonna loosen up the spine and start to wake up the glutes and the tummy muscles. Coming into some pelvic roll-ups. So we're gonna tilt the tailbone, peel the spine up off the mat, lifting the hips up into the side, pushing the feet right down into the earth, and then rolling your way all the way back down, one vertebra at a time, rib cage pulls down, belly button to the floor, and tailbone's the last thing to touch the ground. Tap the tailbone and just scooping into those abs. Lift the hips up towards the ceiling. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze into the back. And roll your way back down. That's two. And last one, tap the tailbone. Lift the hips up towards the sky. And roll your way all the way back down. We're gonna bring the left knee in towards the chest. Interlace the fingers, right leg up to the sky. We're gonna rock the toes over the face and use that to roll you all the way up. You can take more than one rock and roll to lift yourself back up. Everyone's frozen. I think my video might be frozen. Um, there we go. Hello, are you back? My video froze, I think. Uh, no one's moving. There we go. Okay, so we're sitting up. Sorry, I don't know what, ha what happened with the, the connection there. Um, Jackie, thumbs up, back online. Okay, there we go. Everyone's starting to come into the same frame and focus. Okay, so thumbs up if we're back online and you can see me and you can hear me clearly. Okay, still not. Everyone's coming to you really slowly. Okay, but we are gonna place the soles of the feet together and pull ourselves forward. And then I'll be able to tell that everyone's catching up and keeping up. Nope. It's really slow, really delayed. Right, so that's not working. I just need to make a, a technical change online. Um, okay. No. Stop the live. There's too much going on here. Um, we're going to lift the body up, send those feet slightly further forward, so a bit of a bigger diamond. Interlace the fingers, elbows to the front of the shins. This time we're going to round the spine, sending the crown of the head into the soles of the feet. Releasing your forward fold, grasp up, crossing the ankles fully this time, bringing the feet closer together, hands onto the ground in front of you, and we're gonna roll over those knees, coming into our box position, or tabletop. Or just making your way into the tabletop in whichever way is most comfortable for you. Sometimes the rocking forwards over the knees isn't, isn't easy. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips, double check your shins are parallel to one another, and those feet are flat on the floor. Tucking the tailbone, rounding the spine up towards the ceiling. Chin tucks in as you look towards your belly button. Five cat and cows, again, loosening up the spine. As you exhale, arch the spine down. Slide the shoulder blades away from the ears as you open up the chest to face out in front of you. Inhale, tuck the tailbone, round the spine up towards the ceiling, squeezing the hips forward. And as you exhale, arch the spine down. Chin out in front of you. Tailbone draws up to the sky. Take an inhale, squeeze those abs in as you round into the lower back, keeping the pelvis tucked forwards. And exhale, arch it down, three out of five, shoulder blades draw back. 
Inhale, tuck the tailbone, squeeze, pressing the hands into the earth as your chin tucks in, looking at your belly button. And exhale, arching it down, draw the shoulder blades back towards the spine. And last one, inhale, tuck the tailbone, round it up, squeeze the hips forward. And exhale, arch it down. Coming to a neutral spine, we're gonna tuck, uh, place the big toes together, open up the knees as wide as the mat and pull the bum back to the heels, stretching the arms forward for your first child's pose. Dropping your tummy between the thighs, trying to get the chest and forehead to rest on the floor. Shoulders are soft away from the spine. Find the length through the side body. And each inhale stretching where the rib cage and the spine connect and running right down to the base of the tailbone. As you exhale, sink a little deeper towards the mat. Walking your hands off to the left-hand side of the mat, tummy to the left thigh, stretching out of that right hand. Feel the stretch down the right side of the body. Neck is still relaxed. And then walking on over to the right hand side of the mat, tummy to the right thigh, stretching out of that left arm. Coming back to the middle. We're going to slide the hands forward, square off the knees so the hips are directly above the knees and then we're going to stretch the arms forward for your puppy pose. So dropping the chest down to the ground, arching into that upper back in particular. You don't want to feel too much strain in the lower back as you dip down, but rather tuck the tailbone under and sort of scoop into those lower abdominals. So the focus of the stretch is in the upper back and you'll probably also feel it a lot in your shoulders. For me today, my pectorals, my chest muscles are quite stiff, so this one's quite intense across the chest. Gently releasing your puppy pose, take your right arm, threading it through underneath the left armpit, coming to line your right shoulder right here. And then this left hand, which is extended out to the front of the mat, you're gonna keep it at the front of the mat and walk it off to the right hand side of the mat. So you're twisting a little deeper into your thread the needle rotation so that that left hand sort of glides along the front edge of the mat off to the opposite side. You're using that right hand back of the arm, pressing it into the ground to help you twist a little deeper like you want your chest to face the ceiling or the open sky for those lucky ones outside. Left hand returns back to the left side of the mat, drawing yourself back up as you send the right hand out to the front. Left arm threads through underneath the right armpit, coming to lie on the left shoulder, left ear, and then this right hand extended to the front of the mat is going to draw across to the left front of the mat. Using your left hand, back of the hand, pressing into the floor to rotate the chest towards the sky or ceiling. And the further across you get that right hand off to the left, the more of a rotation you're going to get across the spine. Maybe you feel in the back of the shoulder blade if it's quite tight there. Maybe it goes all the way right down into the lower back as well. Walking the right hand back to the right. Left hand extends out to the front. You're going to ripple, sliding your way through all the way onto your tummy. Pel uh, hips connect to the ground. Tucking the chin in, hands underneath the shoulders. Uh, we're going to roll the shoulders back, take an inhale as you float the chin and chest away from the floor for a baby cobra. Squeeze the bum to protect the lower back and start to draw the shoulder blades down the spine. The hands should still be able to lift off the floor. All the work's coming through the muscles of the back to lift your chest away from the floor. On your next inhale, I want you to try lift a little higher and then try maintain that as you exhale. Hands reconnect down to the ground. We're gonna tuck those toes under, pull the hips back, stretch the arms out. Finding a stretch across the soles of the feet, length down the spine, out through the arms. And then we're gonna walk those hands back towards you, coming to sit on those heels. A lot of health benefits from finding that stretch over the big toes. If the knees can't handle this, you can be elevated. 
in a tall kneeling, but I'd like you to try to keep those toes tucked under. If you are elevated, you can lean slightly back so we get that stretch across the big toes anyway. Otherwise, if you're comfortable, have a seat on those heels, palms one inside the other with the palms facing up to the sky. Shoulders roll back as you find length through the spine and settle into your stretch. I'm not going to spend too much time here because it is quite intense. And then untuck those toes, place the hands back down on the ground and we're shifting forwards back into our tabletop. We're going to reach the right arm out in line with the right ear and the left leg's going to reach out behind you parallel to the floor. Double check your lower back's not collapsing, but the belly button uh, uh, pulls in as you reach opposite hand and foot away from one another. I just got a notification that my internet connection is unstable, so hopefully you can all um, keep track of what's going on. It's really not a good day for internet. It's the weather. The Wi-Fi can't bounce through the clouds or something. I don't know how it works. <laughs> so we're just holding our bird dog. Tummy is tight, knees nice and straight, and thumb is drawn right up to the sky. And then hand and knee return back down to the ground and we switch sides. Left hand, right leg, lengthen away from one another. Double check that lower back's not arching. But pull the belly button in, flatten the spine, square off the hips. We just hold for another five. Four, three, two, one. Hand and knee return to the floor. Tuck the toes under, lift the hips up, and we've come to our first downwards facing dog. We're going to pedal out those heels, dropping one heel at a time, stretching into those calves, stretching out the hamstrings. Hands are really working to press the mat away from you, like you want the crown of the head to touch the ground, but without rounding into the lower back. So draw that tailbone up to the sky as you shift side to side through those legs, through the hips. And then settling heat, both heels down to the floor. Lifting the heels up nice and high, tighten the tummy, round the spine forwards as you come into your plank at the front of the mat. Tuck the tailbone under so the back is nice and flat. Core is engaged, strong and supportive of the spine. We lower the knees down to the ground. Make sure your elbows are pointing towards your hips as you lower the chin and chest down to the floor. Untuck the toes, roll the shoulders back. Take an inhale, another baby coat, working into those spinal extensors. You should feel the warmth and the squeeze of the muscles in the back to pull you up away from the floor. And release, tuck the toes under, pull the hips back, stretch the arms out. And then lift the hips up to your downward facing dog once more. Heels sink down, knees straighten out, tailbone draws up to the sky. And walking the feet to the front of the mat. Bending the knees as needed. Once you're at the front, if you're comfortable and confident to straighten up those legs. But it is early on a Saturday morning, so a little soft bend in the knees may be more comfortable. And that's fine. Then I'm going to tuck the tailbone round the spine up towards the ceiling, one vertebra at a time. Rolling the shoulders back and down away from the ears. Take an inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. We're going to interlace the fingers, turn the palms up, draw the arms back behind the ears and squeeze the hips forwards as you open up the chest, stretching into those shoulders. You can look up to the sky, but be careful. Sometimes it's at that can throw off your balance, so be gentle with that. And then as you exhale, swan dive, fold forwards. Hands connect to the ground, and then we're gonna straighten up the legs, slide the hands up the shins into your halfway lift or tabletop, flat back. Hands strong, firmly pressing into the legs. Draw the tailbone up towards the sky. And then exhale, fold forwards. Bend the knees to connect the hands down to the floor. Right foot steps to the back of the mat. We drop the right knee down, unflip that right toe. Inhale, reach the arms up for your crescent lunge. Left knees over left ankle. Tuck the tailbone under, tighten the tummy and draw the arms. Lengthen them right up to the sky, but soften the shoulders away from the ears. We don't want to be too far collapsed because what tends to happen there is we arch into the back. So only shifting as far forward as you can maintain that neutral pelvis. So finding a good stretch across the front of the right hip. 
palms of the hands come together, bring them down to heart center. We take the right elbow to the outside of the left knee, twisting towards that knee. So you're in a revolved crescent lunge. And again, if you're very deep into that, you might struggle a little bit because there isn't a lot of space. Inhale, reach the arms back up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, fold forwards, connect the palms to the ground, tuck the toes of the back leg, lift the knee off the floor and step back into your downward facing dog. Lifting the heels up nice and high, tighten the tummy, round and roll forwards into plank. Tuck the tailbone, core is engaged. If you're feeling strong and ready, you can touch your angle down or drop the knees, chin and chest down to the floor. Unflip the toes. You can press up for Cobra. If your spine is feeling warm and strong, no other spinal uh, conditions or concerns. If you are struggling with pain in your lower back, you can work back to your baby Cobra or into your Sphinx. Tuck the toes under. Pull the hips back, stretch out the arms, find the little stretch across the soles of the feet. It should be much better than the first time that we did that as it warms up and gets a little bit more elastic. Lift the hips up to the sky, downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up towards the ceiling. Make sure you're not rotating those hips, but both hip bones are pointing towards the floor. The toes are flexed as well to keep the toes or to keep the foot pointing towards the ground. Also double checking that those hips are square. Lifting high up onto the left foot, bring your right knee in towards your chest and step the right foot to the front of the mat. Drop the left knee down and flip the toes. Take an inhale, crescent lunge on the other side. Palms turn in, shoulders soften down. Tuck the tailbone under, squeezing the hips forwards. Finding that stretch across the front of the left hip. Palms together, bring them down to heart center, left elbow to the outside of the right knee, pressing the hands together and roll that right shoulder back. You can gaze up towards the sky, but be careful with the balance. Go slow and gentle, making sure you've got yourself. So when we rush, the things tend to fall over, or fall apart, <laughs> or fall over. Inhale, reach those arms back up towards the ceiling. And exhale, folding forwards, hands either side of that front leg, tuck the toes, lift the knee, and step the left foot to the front of the mat. Keeping those knees nice and bent, we're going to brush the fingertips along the floor, reach the arms forwards and up into your uh, cha uh, chair pose. Palms turned in, fingers extended to the sky. If you're struggling with the arms and the shoulders, hands at the heart center. But with the hands at heart center, you should be able to sink a little deeper, a lot deeper. With the arms up to the sky, challenge yourself to sink as low as you can and wiggle out those toes. So the weight is in the heels, where you should feel your glutes a lot more. Feel that heat start to build. Exhale, swan dive, fold forward. Straighten up the legs and inhale, come to halfway lift. You can keep the fingertips connected to the ground, but the goal here is to get the spine as straight as possible and really work on untucking that tailbone and allowing your tummy to fall towards the floor. Hands on the shins or thighs, whichever one works better for you. Folding forwards, bend the knees, take an inhale, reverse one dive all the way up. We're gonna take the right wrist in the left hand and the left hand's gonna pull that right hand over to the left hand side. So we're coming into a side bend here. Try not to close off the body, but keep the shoulders stacked and then press the right hip away from you. Inhale, lift, right hand grasps left wrist and pull that left hand over to the right hand side, pressing the left hip away, finding that big stretch down the left rib cage. Inhale, lift, lengthen the arms up. Get a little back bend through the upper back, but keep the bum squeezing to protect the lower back. As you exhale, swan dive, fold forwards. Then the knees connect the hands to the ground. Left foot steps back. We're on the ball of that left foot, right knee over right ankle. Inhale, high lunge. Lunging into that right knee. 
arms lengthen out to the sky, squaring off those hips. So you want to pull the right hip back and the left hip pulls forwards. Squeeze the back knee away from the floor and let's see if we can sink a little deeper. We're going to exhale, bow or fold forwards over the front thigh, draw the hands down past the ground and lift the hands back towards the back of the mat. Find length in the neck. So coming into our airplane arms over here, you should feel a bit of heat building in that right glute, right front thigh. Take an inhale, lift the arms back up. That's where a lot of extra work is happening. I'm going to throw in an extra one just for luck. Exhale, fold forwards, hands swoop down and draw them right to the back of the mat. Really pulling the fingertips towards that back heel, allowing you to lengthen through the neck and not hold on to any tension in the neck and shoulders. Take an inhale, lift the arms back up. And then folding forwards, hands connect down to the ground, stepping back down its face and dog. Lift the heels, tighten the tummy, roll forwards into plank. Tummy is tight, lower knees, chin and chest, or full chaturanga down. Unflip the toes, press up for cobra. Tuck the toes under, lift the hips up, down and facing dog. Big toes together, open up the knees to the outside edge of the mat, unflip the toes, child's pose. Bum sinks back to the heels as you lengthen the arms to the front of the mat. Tummy melting between those thighs and forehead totally resting. If not on the ground, then at least toward the ground. Shifting your body forwards, tuck the toes under, hips up, straighten out the legs, down dog. Left leg lifts up to the sky, square up the hips, square up the toes to point to the floor. Keep the arms pressing overhead. So we're not coming into a plank. And then the left foot comes into the chest and step the left foot to the front of the mat. We're on the ball of the right foot, back knee is pressed away from the ground. The closer you have your feet together, the easier or more manageable this pose will be. But keeping it nice and wide for the proper work. Inhale, lift the arms up. Sink the hips down, high lunge, palms turned in, softening those shoulders and think as the shoulders soften, we're sinking a little deeper into that stretch. Squeeze that back knee a little further off the floor and then square off the hips. Ideally, each leg is in its separate train track, coming straight out of the hip. If you are struggling to balance, one foot in front of the other would probably be the problem. This is why I missed the video. I can't see if anyone's struggling to balance. Exhale, fold forwards, tummy to thigh, arms swoop down and lengthen to the back of the mat. Draw shoulders away from the ears and lengthen the head, crown of the head out the front of the mat. Breathing into the burn. If you collapse onto this front leg, it does help. <laughs> you don't have to work quite so hard. But ideally, you don't want to be resting too much. Take an inhale as you lift back out of it. Sending all that nourishing oxygen, flushing out the burn just a little bit and exhale, fold forwards, reach the hands down and out the back of the mat. <sighs> Inhale, press yourself up, find that strength. And as you exhale, fold forwards, hands to the floor, let a right foot steps to the front of the mat and you can shake out those legs. One side is harder than the other. Second side's usually the worst. Soften the arms down. You can bend the knees slightly to protect the lower back as you tuck the tailbone round and roll your way all the way back up to standing. One vertebra at a time, squeezing hips forward and rolling the shoulders back and down. Take an inhale, reach the arms up. Interlace the fingers, palms to the sky, draw the arms back behind the ears. And as you exhale, swan dive, fold forwards. Hanging out in your forward fold for an extra moment here. We're going to bend, uh, grasp opposite elbows and allow the forearms to pull you into your forward fold. You can have the knees bent if it's more comfortable. Otherwise, straight legs with the really intense hamstrings. Just 
This is your ragdoll. You can sway from side to side. Gaze is looking out between those knees. Or at least towards the legs. Soften the arms down. We're going to tuck the tailbone and roll and round your way all the way up to standing, squeezing the hips forward. Head is the last thing to come up as those shoulders roll back and down, coming to the center of the mat. Placing the weight into the right foot, we're going to draw the left leg up. You can grasp the ankle, pulling it as high as you can, and then we're going to come into a figure four chair. So, chair pose through that supporting leg. So, single leg squat and resting that ankle over the the chair pose leg and then bring the hands together. If you need to shift over to a wall, you can use a wall or a nearby chair to help you balance. But we're going straight into this one today so we don't use up all of our balance um, stores, supplies, uh, rations. Um, as we find a stretch here in our right glute. You can hold on to the ankle and push the knee open if you want more of a stretch. But the more you untuck that tailbone and sink the bum down deeper into your squat, the more it should stretch anyway. So I have no idea if anyone's got it or if anyone is out of it already. It's very hard without the videos. I feel like I'm missing out on your experience. And I don't even know if any of you are still there might be teaching to nobody. <laughs> uh, technological fears, I suppose. Straightening up that supporting leg, extra bit of work, and right foot drops down to the ground. Switching straight on over to the other side, coming into the squat onto the other leg. So long as you're doing the leg that you didn't just do. Crossing the ankle over just above the knee, so you don't want to be on the knee. You want to create a nice little ledge with that supporting leg. Open up the knee and then pull the hips back hands at heart center. Wiggling out those toes, keeping the weight into the heels, soften the shoulders. You can hold onto that foot for something extra to grasp on. Sometimes it helps the balance. Maybe the foot doesn't want to stay, in which case, please hold it up, it's fine. <laughs> And release, coming up to center and placing the feet back down on the mat. We're back at the front and center. Hopefully the stretches have a bit of a rest. Inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. As you exhale, swan dive, fold forwards. Bend the knees, connect the palms to the ground. Right foot steps back. We're going to take an inhale, lift up into your uh, high lunge once more. Dropping the left hand to the back of the mat, right hand drops out to the front. So we're twisting in that high lunge. We're still on the ball of the back foot and the right hand's at the front with the left knee at the front. So we're twisting towards this bent front leg. Dropping your right hand down to the inside of the left foot and left arm reaches up to the sky. Twisted low lunge. Dropping your back knee down to the ground, slow and gentle, untucking those toes and using the left fingertips to pull you back up into a twisted crescent lunge. Shoulders are soft, twist from the core, not just the arm reaching back, but roll that shoulder back, and you don't want to be too collapsed forwards either, but keeping the body equally between both legs, right in the center. And then we cartwheel the arms down either side of the front foot, tuck the toes, lift the knees, step back down dog. Lift the heels high, round and roll forwards into plank, lowering knees, chin and chest, or full chaturanga. Press up for your cobra, tuck the toes, lift the hips, down dog. Right leg lifts to sky, right foot steps to the front of the mat. On the ball of the left foot, inhale, reach the arms high lunge. Sinking the hips down, squaring off the hips. Flattening out that lower back, wiggling out those right toes. 
right hand drops out to the back, left hand extends out to the front, twisting towards the right side of the mat. Left hand to the ground, right hand to the sky. Breathing throughout and slow and gentle poses. We're not rushing anything here. Drop the left knee down to the ground, unflip the toes and slowly lift back up to your twisted low lunge. Crescent lunge. Cartwheel down either side of the front foot. We're gonna take this left foot back. So we're in our kneeling position, shift the hips back, swing the feet out and come to a tall seated. Legs extended out in front of you on the front, at the front of the mat. Sit bones connected to the ground. Toes drawn up to the sky. Lengthen the arms out in front of you, hinging through the hips and folding forwards. Softening the neck and shoulders. Really tucking your chin in towards the chest and notice how intense the stretch is. So as you look towards your belly button, you should feel the pull right down between the shoulder blades, maybe even into the lower back. So as always, we're not forcing anything, we're just playing into that space and feeling the different sensation. It's not just not being flexible enough and the muscles are sort of pulling, but what's actually happening here when you tuck the chin in is we're getting a bit of a, a neural stretch. So literally stretching the nerves. Or maybe your nerves are really flexible and this is really easy and your head's on the knees and it's <laughs> no problem. But the more you round out the back through the neck, you should feel this slightly different pulling sensation right the length from the sort of crown of the head all the way through potentially to the soles of the feet. Rolling and rounding your way all the way up. We're gonna reach the arms out in front of you rocking back over the sit bones and then lean your body back to about a 45 degree. We're going to do six rotations here just to strengthen the core a little bit. So the right arm stays forward, left arm rotates out to the back, twisting through the tummy and draw back to center. The further back you go, the more the abs are going to work. Right arm reaches out to the back of the mat, twist through the core and untwist back to center, keeping your body leaning back. Left arm for three, and draw it back, right arm for four, and draw it back, two more, five, and back, and last one, six, and back, tuck the tailbone, we roll our way all the way down to the ground, having a lie down on your back. So we're gonna come into a counter pose, which counters the forward flexion that we've just done through the spine. So you're going to put your hands underneath your bum, palms facing the floor, if you have serious neck problems, don't rest this next pose on your head. Um, you can actually just stay in this position. It might already be stretching the shoulders, depending how uh, tight the shoulders are. Otherwise, we're going to lift up, prop those elbows underneath you, and just gently drop the head back. There's a little back bend going on here, and then a little neck stretch as well. But go gentle, feel if there's any pain or tension, sharp pulling, compression, anything like that in the neck. If you can rest the head on the ground, you're welcome to do so. But we're going to start nice and easy with the head just sort of hanging and working the elbows together. Then I want you to think about opening up your heart towards the ceiling as well. So think length across the collarbones. And gently release all the way back down bringing the feet in towards you knees towards the chest pull those knees tight in towards the body and gently rocking from side to side head and neck are totally relaxed lifting the feet up to the sky we're going to place the hands on the outsides of the feet and then draw the knees either side of the uh, the rib cage in your happy baby so shins are perpendicular to the ground, knees are squeezing towards the floor, and if that tailbone has started to elevate, try to pull the tailbone down towards the ground. Shoulder blades are drawn back towards the floor. This is nice and intense in the hips. 
hopefully you can reach the feet. If not, you can just grab the ankles and pull the knees down towards the ground. Releasing your happy baby, send the left leg out along the mat, right knee comes in towards the chest. Taking a big inhale, and as you exhale, cross this right knee off to the left side of the mat, right arm lengthens along the floor as you find the rotation through the lower back. I want the whole pelvis twisting over, so it's not just your knee and thigh crossing over the sort of center of the pelvis, but the whole pelvis is rotating, allowing the knee to go way further and there was the clunk in my lower back <laughs> not what we're looking for but maybe it'll offer some relief so you can have the hand on the outside of the thigh or on the outside of the hip helping the pelvis to and working to keep the right shoulder connected to the ground Undoing your rotation, send your right leg out along the mat, left knee comes in, interlace the fingers, squeezing that left knee tight in towards the chest. If you find you have restrictions coming straight up towards you, you can move the knee pulling towards the armpit so that it's on the outside of the rib cage. Right thigh, back of the thigh is pressing into the floor. And then stretch the left arm out along the shoulder, along the ground, right hand to the outside of the left knee and rotate so knee all out of thigh or right up into the hips as you pull the hips over keeping the left shoulder connected to the ground and today for me especially feeling a big stretch across the front left shoulder right into the pecs as the shoulders stay stuck on the ground if you're not getting enough of a stretch or you want to play around with getting a bit of a deeper stretch you can also take this left hand behind the head and then work the elbow to stay in touch with the floor. Releasing your rotation, coming up to center and uh, yeah, squaring off the hips, crossing your right ankle over the left knee, reach the hands through for the back of the left thigh and pull that left thigh towards you. If you want, if you need more control or stability or a different kind of stretch, you can also grasp the ankle, pulling it tight, helping the knee to pull the foot in towards the body. And then the right hand can press the right knee away from you. Breathing into your stretch. Releasing the foot down, right foot down to the ground, left ankle crosses over right knee, reach the hands through for the back of the right thigh and pull that right knee towards you. You can use your left elbow on the inside of the left knee to push it open if that's what works best for you. Otherwise, hand to the knee and other hand to the foot whilst the right knee pulls and helps you. Trying to sort of, sort of thinking about getting your shin towards your chest. I mean, maybe one day, but you wanna also keep your tailbone tucked down to the ground or untucked to the floor. Releasing the foot down, feet to the mat, adjusting the feet to the outside edges of the mat. Both knees going to drop over to the right hand side and then the right foot places on top of the left knee. Pulling the knees down to the floor, tightening the tummy to get that stretch of the left hip flexor. So just to recap, both knees fell over to the right, and then the right foot went on top of the left knee. You wanna bring this left heel as close to your bum as you can, unless it's a really, really intense, super maximum stretch, in which case don't worry about it. But if you wanna intensify that stretch, you can work that left foot much closer towards your glutes on the left-hand side. And the tighter your tummy and the more you work that lower back in towards the ground, the bigger the stretch is going to be, especially over the front of the hip flexor. So right across this, where your hip folds. Releasing the foot, drawing both knees up, adjusting into the lower back and pelvis. Feet as wide as the mat once more and starting off with them nice and close to your bum. Both knees drop over to the left hand side and then the left foot places on top of the right knee both knees to the floor and then right foot shuffles 
closer to your right glute, tightening the tummy to get the lower back down to the ground. Then releasing the foot, lifting both knees up. Bring your knees tight and towards your chest just to release any tension you may have gained through the lower back. And then we're going to straighten out both legs along the mat. Adjust the feet to the outside edges of the mat. So feet flopping in opposite corners, arms alongside the body. We're going to turn the palms to face up towards the ceiling. Adjusting the shoulder blades so the shoulder blades are flush along the floor. Uh, so the pokey bits are not poking into the ground. And there's a little bit more length in the back of the neck. We're going to close the eyes as we set up for our Shavasana, our corpse pose, our relaxation and recovery. A little bit of body awareness and body mindfulness. So the eyes soften, we're not scrunching the eyes closed. And then I want you to slightly tuck the chin in so we get a little bit more length in the back of the neck. So the big arch of the back of the neck pulling away from the ground. I want you to try and flatten that arch towards the floor. In some instances, your neck might be so tight that getting your head onto the ground in this position is already challenging. Maybe your head has dropped back to touch the ground and that's sort of a, an indicator that there's far too much neck tension or that you spend too much time with your chin jutting forwards on a daily basis. Um, so we need to start working the back of the neck towards the ground so your head naturally on a throughout the day sits on top of your body instead of forwards of your body. So in lengthening the back of the neck, you should feel changes to the tension around the neck and shoulders. This happens. It can only be so tense because the tension goes in a certain direction. So bring your attention then to your chest and lower down into the shoulders and think about lengthening across the collarbones. All that time spent rounded behind a computer screen, I want you to open that up and maybe the arms start to drift a little wider away from the body. Back of the arms are heavy into the floor. taking note into your breath, filling up into that chest that you've now expanded from the collarbones and hopefully now you have even more space to breathe in, right into the chest and through the ribs and exhale as the rib cage draws down into the floor. So that whole rib cage and your rib cage, the ribs, we know about the ribs around the torso, but the ribs go all the way up right underneath your collarbones as well. So that whole section is often bigger than we imagine. And part of the reason we have ribs is to protect our lungs and some of the other internal organs, but right now we're thinking about our lungs. So feel how the entire rib cage moves with each inhale and each exhale. The belly should also be moving with each inhale. And this should just sort of demonstrate how important your belly slash core muscles are as they're involved with your breathing as well. So each strong exhale I want you to feel the core muscles actively engaging to squeeze all the air out of the lungs. And then you can use your, in, your tummy muscles to inhale as they reverse that motion and expand, creating space, pulling down on the lungs to fill them even deeper with air. And exhale. Those lower abdominal muscles, as they squeeze out, I want you to feel how they knit both hip bones towards the center of that lower abdominal region. Demonstrating again how everything is connected. Strong core, strong breath. 
strong breath, good oxygen supply to the body and to the brain. I want you to soften any tension in the hips so those feet really totally flop out to the sides. All this concentration might have that forehead in a frown once more. So just soften the face. On our next inhale, we're gonna reach the arms overhead along the ground. Stretching your fingers away from your body and then stretch your toes. You can reach them drop right down the middle as they reach away from your hands. Big inhale. And as you exhale, bring both knees in towards the chest. Wrap the arms around the knees and gently rock from side to side, finding a massage either side of the spine. The closer the knees are in towards you, the um, higher up the back the massage will work and the further away the knees are the lower down the back um, perhaps down into the pelvis the, the massage will, will work we're going to slowly lower ourselves all the way over onto the right uh, the left hand side using your left hand underneath your head right arm drapes over the body this allows your heart rate and blood pressure to slowly come back to normal instead of pressing yourself up too fast so we get a head rush so we're keeping the eyes closed Catching your breath. And with those eyes staying closed, you're going to press yourself all the way up to seated. Finding yourself in an easy seated position, crossing the ankles in whatever way is most appropriate for you. Hands are resting softly on the knees. You're going to sit the spine against an imaginary wall and then dropping the chin towards the chest. Take a moment to appreciate the effort and energy you put into yourself this morning. Congratulate yourself for making it here on our first class of the year. And just appreciate the time and, and energy you put into your day. Fluttering the eyes open to gaze towards the floor. And raising the chin up. Taking a deep breath in, squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears. And as you exhale, I want you to side out and drop those shoulders down. We're gonna do one more of those. Inhale. And exhale, drop those shoulders down. Thank you so much for joining me this morning.